This is Food for Thought. Our mission is to improve all agrarian coffee farmers' quality of life through subsistence farming, raising wages, and entrepreneurial opportunities such as microcredit. Our vision is to educate rural farmers on how to use microcredit, establish sustainable agriculture techniques, unionize the coffee industry to establish fair wages, and improve general health. In doing this, we will partner with three nonprofit organizations. The first, Kiva International, is a microcredit organization that allows anyone to donate and track the status of their loans, as well as has partner groups that work on the field to manage loans. The next, RACIDA, or Rural Agency for Community Development and Assistance, has a mission to enhance self-reliance and prosperity amongst vulnerable pastoral communities living in arid and semi-arid lands. The third, Farm Africa, is working to improve farming conditions, provide practical and necessary tools to enhance production, as well as improve coffee profits throughout various projects. Our development priorities consist of improving the education in agriculture, education of children, and health in rural areas relating to women and children. Agriculture is the main job opportunity in Ethiopia. Some household areas earn as little as $90 a year, yet Ethiopia is the fifth largest producer of coffee in the world. The problem? Ethiopian farmers are excluded from much of the profits. Our goal for improving education in agriculture is to teach farmers how to use microcredit and establish a workers' union. The current literacy rate for Ethiopians is 57.2% for males and 41.1% for females. School expectancy is between 8 and 9 years. The overall objective for the education of children is to improve participation in school and to raise the literacy rate. This will be done by using microcredit, establishing a standard curriculum, and increasing the supplies and teachers available. The objective to improve the health of women and children in rural areas consists of training of midwives and the application of sanitation techniques to decrease the postnatal and maternal mortality rate. This will be done by training Ethiopians to be midwives, providing clean birthing facilities, and making vaccines available. The social risks that can arise from the implementation of our project includes ethnic tension ranging from disputes to races for natural resources. This is due to the fact that Ethiopians are ethnically diverse with the most important differences on the basis of linguistic characterization. The three major ethnic groups are the Oromo, Amhara, and Somali. Another social issue is Ethiopian men may not support women being educated on a program and receiving equal wages. A risk we face in governance includes the uncertainty in Ethiopian government funding and its long-term support of the project. This would include coordination of the government and its officials with the agency in handling aid. Environmental risk that we face is the unpredictability of weather patterns and growing seasons due to climate change. These dramatic changes can lead to storms, floods, and droughts. Natural disasters can be devastating to these low-income families. To mitigate all these issues, we must ensure prevention of favoring certain ethnic groups teaching sustainable agriculture techniques that will not harm the environment that are currently used in the developing world, and working with government agencies and officials to ensure cooperation. In order to measure the progress of our developmental project in rural Ethiopia, we look at indicators within three major components, agriculture, education, and health. Within agriculture, we focus on the unionization of farmers and look at the number of unions that exist within rural Ethiopia, as well as the number of members of each union. We also look at basic income levels and their improvement within our developmental project. In terms of education, we focus on school life expectancy and literacy rates. Literacy rates specifically between ages 15 and over, as well as 15 and under, relating to children and adults. We also look at school life expectancy ranging from primary education, secondary education, and tertiary education. For health, we focus on infant and mother mortality rates, two of our major focuses for this overall developmental project that we wish to improve over the next 10 years. The time frame for our development plan starts with the initial base. We begin by spreading awareness of microcredit, with the first year focusing on educating farmers on how to effectively utilize microcredit. We then aim to bring in agriculture experts who can teach more sustainable and profitable techniques while we provide farmers with better equipment. 
Investing in education br begins with establishing of a standard curriculum and increasing supplies and teachers av available via funding. To start our goal of bettering health for women and children, we will bring in midwives to begin training others, as well as starting to implement our sanitation techniques. In year two, we will begin to give out microcredit loans with small loans that have low interest rates. We plan to have a presence in the region to ensure changes are occurring as well as ensuring proper use of microcredit. This will allow us to provide assistance to those who are having troubles. Also in year two, we will begin phasing out our experts and trainers. Much of the loans will be due to be paid back in year four. This allows time for three coffee, coffee harvest cycles of production. At this point, we will also gather data on these loans, allowing us to see the pro our progress and areas that need work. If we see our projected outcomes, then we'll supply more loans of higher amounts. We will also be able to gather statistics for our education changes, such as test stores. We will check in on our trained midwives, as well as provide a sanitation inspection for our focus areas.